So guys, so in this video, we will be talking about what an idealized structure is or what is an analytical model. We'll also be discussing the importance of choosing an appropriate analytical model for a structure so that we could determine the forces acting in that structure within reasonable accuracy. All right, so let's begin. So what is an idealized structure or an analytical model? And why do we use them and when do we use them? So we use this when we're doing our structural analysis. Sometimes our structures could be a bit complicated that it becomes hard for us to do a structural analysis. And since we're engineers, we like to simplify things. So basically, your idealized structure or analytical models is just a simplified representation of a real structure for the purpose of analysis. So these structures or models represent the behavioral characteristics of our structure of interest while discarding much of the detail about the members, connections, etc. That is, that is expected to be having little effect on the desired characteristics, namely, or stressless and deflections on the members and the support reactions. All right, so in social analysis, we will be mainly dealing with two types of structures. So the first type is our plane structures, and then the second type is our space structures. Now, plane structures are structures where all members and applied loads lie on a single plane. Um, the analysis of your plane structures are much simpler and less complicated compared to your space structures. Fortunately, some 3D structures could be subdivided into plane structures for analysis. As an example, let's look at a framing system of a bridge um, shown here in this figure. So the main members of our system are namely the deck where our vehicles pass through. And then your deck lies on the stringers, and then your stringers lies on the floor, be floor beams, which are connected on the joints of our truss. Now, how do we convert this 3D structure into a plane structure? We need to talk about how the loads are being transmitted first. So as I said earlier, our traffic or the vehicles are moving along the deck. So from the deck, your loads are transmitted to the stringers. And then from the stringers, the load is, is transmitted to our floor beams. And then from, from our floor beams, it is transmitted to the joints of our truss. So we can now convert our 3D structure to a plane structure. Since we can now um, transfer the loads to the joints of our truss. And when we're doing analysis, we can now analyze the truss itself. So this is the line diagram or the analytical model of our truss. As you can see for the supports, at one end, we have a roller support. And then on the other end, we have a hinge support. And this is the line diagram of our truss. For the line diagram of our truss, it is important to note that this line um, coincides with the centroidal axis of the members of our truss, right? And even though the joints of our truss are usually bolt connected or welded together, it is safe to assume that um, using hinge joints in our analysis would relatively provide us an accurate um, an accurate solution or result for the stresses, the deflections, and the support reactions. All right, so once that we have the line diagram of our bridge trust, um, the next thing that you usually do uh, for your structural analysis is that you need to compute the loads um, that will be applied to the joints of your trust. So for our for our beam or for our our bridge here, our loads would be applied to the joints to these joints. Since the transfer of the load is from the deck, so we have the deck and then we have the stringers, and then from the stringers it is transferred to your floor beams, and then from the floor beams it is transferred to your joints. So it's just a matter of computing these loads, right? So another example, 
So let's consider a framing system of a multi-story building. Right, so at each story, we have our floor slabs. So this is where the loads on our building are, usually our live loads. So we have our people here and our stuff, right? So from the slab, the load is transferred to our floor beams. Of course, this includes your the self-weight of the members itself. So yeah, from the slab, transferred to our floor beams. And then from our floor beams, it is transferred to our girders. And then from the girders, it is transferred to our columns. And then finally, it reaches your foundation. It is also the same for our bridge structure. So from our the joints of your truss, the loads are going to be transferred to your support structure. So you will have some support reactions here due to the loading of our bridge system. All right. So this is a plan showing our, our floor system. So we have here the floor beams. This is going to be our floor beams. And this is where your slab is going to lie on. And then from the slab, the load is transferred to this floor beams. And then these floor beams are being carried by your girders, right? And then the load from the girders are going to be transferred to your columns until it goes down to your foundation, okay? So this is the line diagram of our multi-story rigid frame. So as you can see, this, um, this structure is a structural steel structure. So the joints would be typically connected by welding or by bolts, right? So these joints are typically rigid joints, as you can see in our figure. And then for our supports, these are usually fixed supports, okay? All right, so let's proceed to our space structures. So space structures are 3D structures that cannot be subdivided into plane structures due to their shape, their arrangement of the members, or the applied loadings. So an example of this one is your domes and transmission towers. Now, the analysis of 3D bodies subjected to 3D4 system could be a bit complicated, um, especially for this type of space structures. Um, this is usually done in a graduate school level. But we will be doing some 3D analyses um, for space trusses later on in our discussions, right? So let's talk about our support connections and, and how we could simplify them for our analytical models. So there are three types of joints most often specified. These are your pin connections your roller support, and your fixed joints. So these are the typical support um, connections that we use in our structures. So your pin supports and roller supports allow some freedom or slight rotation, whereas your fixed joints allow no relative rota rotation, so it can't move in this manner. Um, between the connected members and is consequently more expensive to fabricate. Okay, so when considering your support, support connections, we need to um, examine what movements are being prevented. So for example, for our typical pin-supported connection, um, as you can see, we have our bolts here. So from examination, we know that this type of movement would be prevented by the bolts. Also, our bolts would prevent uh, vertical movements of our structures or the connected members. But there is no um, prevention for some rotation. Likewise, for our typical roller-supported connection, the only movement that is being prevented is the translation, uh, some vertical translation. But our structure, our beam, could actually move in this manner. And it is also free 
to rotate in a very, very small degree. Of course, there are some um, other considerations that might prevent this type of movement. And then we have our fixed connection. So for our fixed connection, it is prevented in moving in all directions. So we don't have horizontal translation. We don't have vertical translation here. We don't even have some rotation. So it is prevented by the connection itself. As you can see here, this one is your typical fixed support um, connection that is bolted together. Okay? So for our support connection, we need to determine um, or we need to simplify the connections and use idealized symbols to represent them in our line diagrams. So we have here an actual beam that is uh, in one end supported um, by a pin and on the other end, it is resting maybe on a girder, All right? So it is loaded uh, by a P concentrated load. So to simplify this, uh, we're going to draw an idealized beam. So for the line diagram, this the length of this line would coincide with the length of our actual beam. And then for our pin support, it is represented by this idealized symbol. And then for this connection where our floor beam is resting on a girder, this provides a smooth contact surface, thus we could consider this as a roller. And our rollers are represented by this symbol. Now, I remember when I was in when I was an undergrad student, I've always wondered what this this symbols would look like in real life. So I have provided some uh, figures um, to show you what this supports look like in practice. So this is a typical rocker support used for a bridge. And this one are rollers and associated bearing pads that are used to support the pre-stressed concrete girders of a highway bridge. Now, this one is an example of a short link used to connect two girders of the highway bridge and thus allowing for thermal expansion of the deck. This one is a typical pin used to support the steel girder of a railroad bridge. Okay. Next, let's um, see what are the idealized symbol that we are going to use for our analytical models. As I said earlier, it is important to know um, that the supports will develop a force on the member if it prevents translation of the member and it will develop a moment if it prevents rotation of the member. So our first type of connection would be our weightless link. So for our weightless link, the reaction force that acts um, here is, or the reaction that acts here would be along the direction of the cable or the link. So you can see here um, for this connection, Nothing prevents this one from moving or from rotating in this manner. And it um, the only movement that is being prevented is along the direction of your weightless link. Thus, our reaction is acting along that, um, that link. So we only have one unknown here since we only have one reaction. Okay. Next, we have our rollers and rockers. So for the rollers and rockers, the movement that is being prevented is vertical translation. Now, our structural elements are actually free to move horizontally. And it can also rotate in this manner. Thus, the only movement that is prevented, vertical lang. So our reactions are only going to be acting perpendicular to the surface of the point of contact. So we have here our reaction. So we only have one unknown. So it is, it is important to know how many reactions, how many support reactions we have for each type of connection. 
right? The next type is our smooth contacting surface. So this is just practically your structural element or structural member just resting on a surface or on the ground or on the wall. So for this one, the only movement that is being prevented is its um, vertical translation. So it is free to move in this manner and it's also free to rotate in this manner. So again, we only have one unknown, one reaction for this one. The fourth one is our smooth pin collar or smooth pin connected collar. So uh, as you can see from the figure, when you examine it, our connection can free or the elements could move horizontally. And then it can also rotate. So the only movement that is being prevented is the vertical translation. Thus, we only have one reaction, one unknown. Okay? Next is we have the pin or the hinge. For the pin or the hinge, the only movement that is being allowed is some rotation. The vertical and horizontal translation are being prevented by this support. Thus, we have two unknowns and two support reactions. Next, we have our sliders and fixed connected collar. Fixed connected collars, right? So for this one, um, rotation is being prevented. Also, some horizontal translation are being prevented. But our structure are actually free, or rather, um, this uh, the horizontal translation are actually being prevented. But the vertical translation is being allowed. So we only have two unknowns, one horizontal force and one moment. The last type would be our fixed support. So for the fixed support, all translation, vertical, horizontal translation, and rotation are being prevented by the support itself. Thus, we would have three um, support reactions or three unknowns. Um, one vertical or one horizontal reaction, one vertical reaction, and then we have one moment. All right, so those are the things that you need to know so that you could simplify real structures for structural analysis. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.